one reason why this type of transition would be significant is if you're moving the electrons towards a more electronegative atom. Well, how about in this case? Are we moving the electrons towards the more electronegative atom here? Carbon versus oxygen? Yeah. yeah. Yes. So, should we draw this? Yes. So this would be a good example of something that satisfies this. So obviously you have to be able to tell who's more electronegative. Those are the things that are further to the right. This should make sense. Who wants the electrons more, the oxygen or the carbon? Oxygen. So it makes sense that, it'll be, that it's significant when the oxygen just grabs the electrons for itself. That would give us a resonant structure that looks like this. How about this? Would this be significant? Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, I see. Would this be a significant arrow? No. Because no? why would the electrons want to move towards the less electronegative element? All right. So normally, we wouldn't even bother drawing this. I'm just drawing this for, as to, for an illustration. And normally, you wouldn't even bother drawing this resonance structure. I'm just drawing it to illustrate things. Yeah. OK. But it is a resonance structure, right? It is a legal resonance structure. It does make some contribution to the characteristics of the molecule, but it's such a small contribution that it's not worth considering. Mm -hmm. So let's put those, these into the categories I've talked about before. Um, would we call this the most significant, the less significant, or the insignificant structure? Less significant, because it's legal. Yeah, but you can still be legal, and there's so uh, the point I want to make is that being legal is completely different than from being significant. Okay, then insignificant. Yeah, insignificant. Not too little with the You're never just for this is insignificant because we're, we've moved the electrons towards the less electronegative element. This is legal. Um, but it, um, so what, what is the real molecule? The real molecule is a kind of weighted average of these three things. Um, for example, how much charge is there on this carbon? Well, it's a weighted average of this zero charge, this positive one charge, and this negative one charge. And when you take a weighted average, what, what, what would the weights be? Well, the weight on this would be something like 0.001, a very small weight. So it's going to play hardly any role. All right? um, it's like, um, let's say that uh, you... Uh, Let's say, like, like in your GPA, let's say that you went to school for four years um, and um, you got one F. Well, that one F is going to play a role in your GPA, but it's going to be a very small role because it has a very small weight because you only got one of those Fs. So it might, it might not even be worth even talking about. It might be insignificant, at least if you take a lot of classes. All right. All right. Um, on the other hand, um, these are both significant. They're both worth writing. By the way, which of these is more significant? The more stable one on the left. Because it has no charges, oh, for one yeah. thing. It's better. So even though the oxygen is more electronegative, yeah. it doesn't actually like having a charge. So this is the more significant, mm. or the most significant. This is less significant, but still worth drawing. This is less significant, but still well worth drawing. But this is so insignificant that we wouldn't draw it, even though it is technically legal, because mm -hmm. it hasn't broken the octet rule. All right, so I only drew all three of these uh, to illustrate the ideas. On an actual problem, these would be the only two resonance structures you would bother, draw you would bother drawing. So just because this is less, less significant doesn't mean we shouldn't draw it. We should draw both the more significant and the less significant resonance structures. We should just avoid the ones that are completely insignificant. Yeah. And of course, we should also avoid resonance structures that are illegal. So the two things we don't want to draw are things that are illegal, because they violate these rules, or things that are completely insignificant, because they violate these rules. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, we can start to see that there are some subtleties here. All right, so here's one way to tell whether you're making a significant uh, arrow when you're forming a lone pair. There's one other way you can be significant. Uh, you uh, might want to form a lone pair. It's also significant to form a lone pair to make room for a pi bond. Mm.
make room for a Piedmont. For example, in this case, um, notice that this arrow is forming a lone pair. So we have to decide whether it's going to be significant or not. Well, we're not moving the electrons towards a more electronegative element. So our first criterion doesn't <coughs> apply here. But is there a good reason to move these? Well, yes, we've got to move this pi bond out of the way to make room for this pi bond that's coming in from behind. We already talked about this idea earlier when we were talking about these ideas. So is this a significant arrow? Yes. yes, there is a good reason to draw this, not to move the electrons towards a more electronegative element, but <coughs> instead to make room for this pi bond that's coming in from behind. All right, so um, this would be significant as well. So for example, is this a significant arrow? It's legal, but it's not significant. Why should we put a negative charge here and a positive charge here when they both have the same electronegativity? So I wouldn't bother drawing this. This is insignificant. Is this a significant arrow? No, where are we moving? The, where are we getting the electrons from here? The pi bond. Yeah, the tail tells us we're taking it from the pi bond. Did you have anything else? Yeah, this is the only arrow. So yes. by itself, is this significant? No, because no, we're moving the we're forming a lone pair, but we're doing it on the more electric, the less electronegative elements. This would also be insignificant. Is this significant? Yes. Now we're moving the electrons yeah, towards yeah. the more electronegative. It's not going to be as significant as what we started with because we're going to be forming charges, but it's still significant enough to be worth drawing. Okay, and is this significant? Yes. Compare this and this. In both cases, we have two carbons. Here, there was no reason to move the electrons, but here there's a good reason, which is to make room for the pi bond that's coming in from behind. So this would be significant. Now, how about this? Now, in this case, we're not forming a pi bond. We're forming a, we're not forming a lone pair. We're forming a pi bond. So we don't ask if this is significant. We ask if it's legal. Is this a legal error based on these criteria? Yeah. Uh, yes? which of these criteria well, applies to this arrow. It's legal because we're making the pi bond with an atom that's losing yeah. the pi bond. Mm -hmm. So the reason that this is significant is the same reason that this arrow is legal. Mm -hmm. The fact that this is a significant arrow also told us that this is a legal arrow. So we have to check all the arrows. When you're forming pi bonds, you have to check whether the arrow is legal. And when you're forming a lone pair, you have to check whether it's significant. So this is the table that summarizes resonance. And you always have to check one of these things. When you're forming pi bonds, you have to check this. So I'll underline this one. Notice that when you check these, when we're forming a pi bond. And it's only significant to form a lone pair when we have one of these two characteristics. So when you're forming a pi bond, you check this. When you're form forming a lone pair, you check this. So why wouldn't, for example, that um, double bond, that pi bond, mm -hmm. move instead Down of to here? the corner? Yeah. It could. You're right. It could. So this is, this is a significant resonance structure. It's not the only significant resonance structure that we can draw. You can't move it down there, because then Let's you Let's go through that. Four, five bonds. Well, then the next one will have to Oh, they all move? You know, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they just come back, yeah. All right. Now, is this arrow acceptable by itself? Mm. No. We can't form a pi bond unless we're also moving the pi bond. Now, where would we move this pi bond? One place we can move the pi bond is here. Mm -hmm. 
Another place that we can move the pi bond, though, is here. Now, is this arrow acceptable by itself? No. No. But now we're making room for that pi bond that's coming in from behind. Is this arrow acceptable? Yes. Now we're forming a lone pair, but it's okay to form a lone pair to make room for a pi bond mm -hmm. that's coming in from behind. Mm -hmm. Now, which of these would you usually draw? Well, usually what you want to do is draw all the resonant structures. So you want to go in small steps so yeah. you don't miss anything. Right. Normally, you wouldn't draw this because then you'd be missing this resonant structure over here. So this is perfectly acceptable if this is the only resonant structure you care about. But if you're trying to draw all the resonant structures, you should do this first, and then we'll get to this later. But th this does match our rules.